Thank you, President London. President uh, Director Guy, I always, uh, again, I always learn from you and get your passion. Uh, my, my question is going to be more narrowly focused to District 6 schools. Um, and I, I asked uh, Dr. Smith, uh, Dr. Smith, <laughs> Dr. Smith, I asked some of the questions last time, and I just kind of reiterate some of those questions. Um, in terms of, uh, and you know, we had some Carl Monk parents tonight, I'm going to address some of those issues as well. But in terms of Burkhalter, um, you know, it's not on this closure list for this year, but you know, the goal is to get 380 students when they're currently about 180. Um, there's no way they're going to get 200 students within a year, especially in that smaller school site. So really the, 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 the game plan, it looks to be if they're going to move them next year, what, the, what is the game plan for that? Um, I mentioned last time at one point, I, I believe they did have six, 700 kids, students on that campus. Um, that's not realistic today's, um, we don't have that many students in the city uh, today doing that. So I want to see uh, what, what's happened with that. Um, in addition, <clears throat> You know, I had an opportunity to go to the Maxwell Park meeting um, uh, last Saturday, and while you know Maxwell Park is technically in, in Dr. Yee's district, it's right across the street from District Six. Number um, families live in. Uh, oh, should I get this? One? Do that one instead. Number of families live um, in District Six, and um, you know there was a number of questions asked about why you know we're putting this great program, Melrose Leadership Academy, with the K through eight Spanish language immersion program. Well, why wasn't initially, so the question is, and obviously it's hindsight, but why wasn't it put initially at Maxwell Park to take advantage of um, larger economy scale, larger space? And, you know, as, as uh, Mr. Visnick pointed out, you know, it's a large African American population at that school. And I know the current Melrose leadership is pulling in a lot uh, wider range of kids because a lot of families want to have their kids uh, learn other languages. Uh, last week I was out of the country and a lot of my cousins from Lebanon, they all speak three languages. And it, it's, you know, we all need languages, and, and so that, uh, that's an opportunity a lot of families are looking at. In terms of Carl Monk, um, I think a number of the two, you know, Ms. Nelson and Ms. Nero, that were raising some uh, concerns, and I did get a number of emails, a number of uh, phone calls today, and I've called, <laughs> I called you back, I called you back, I, I emailed you back, but more importantly, um, the district's emailing you back, and more importantly, the, the, the idea that we're pulling a teacher out today or whatever it's going to be, very imminently. And that means it's going to cut our numbers down for next year. So at that point, you're already reducing the number of students that are attending there. And then for next year, you're going to be doing the same thing unless we get a certain amount. So there was, there's, and I've gotten a few emails about this. What is the, the balancing point of that? Because if we're going to keep undercutting teachers, and the, basically the enrollment's going to be depressed by our policies from what the kind of the game and what it is. So I want some clarity on that one, if I could. Um, and again, a school like Carl Monk, where there's not a whole lot of students in the very immediate area, um, again, you have the, the large uh, community college there, and it's, uh, there aren't a whole lot of stuff. So that is a school that has prided itself on drawing students from a wide area of the city, a wide swath of East Oakland. Um, but there are some fam there are a lot of families that are in the general geographic area, but they aren't choosing Carl Monk. And so, um, per, you know, per se, they're going other places. But what would be the... Um, you know, the option to, 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 to balance our goal of having people live in the community, but yet be an open enrollment. I know Director Copper, she raved that. And that first school, like Carl Monk, which is a commuter school, quote unquote, but it's still located physically in the hills, although the, the population is over 51%. Uh, so it's a Title I school, so it's not a traditional hill school population, um, but it is located. It, parents driving there, parents choosing there. We have people from outside the city that are going there. Um, so those are kind of the, the issues I, I want to raise. And again, I, and the last question, the last point was on, you know, for Greenleaf Whittier that's going to go, that has made the choice to go K-8. Other schools have asked me, hey, well, why can't I get that? What do I need to do to, to, to get involved in that process? So um, that's kind of where I'm at.